it is very difficult to really um, determine exactly what will uh, happen. But it has gone uh, so far that uh, I don't think that uh, it can be you know, totally crushed. So what we will see in the future um, or immediate uh, near future would be probably something, uh, something positive. Um, you know, for the uh, uh, you know distant future, one really doesn't know how the revolution itself uh, would evolve, whether or not the, uh, this revolution will be able to dislodge the regime and and you know create a truly democratic uh, uh, regime, or uh, you know a certain segment of the regime will stay and uh, to, to distort, in fact, the change that uh, many people right now want. It's very hard to really determine right now. What do you think? Well, yes, the, as I have said, the question of um, how other states in the region will be affected by this in part uh, hinges on what the outcome in, in Egypt is. Do we end up, uh, is, it, uh, is the movement repressed, which seems unlikely it will be totally repressed at this point, or do we end up with some sort of a hybrid with sort of ha- halfway toward uh, a more open democratic system but not all the way there? Or do they go all the way, and a year from now, do we have so, something resembling a functioning uh, uh, democracy? So that that remains to be seen. Uh, a lot of people have talked about dominoes. It's a, it's a uh, the domino effect is a popular uh, metaphor. Uh, but uh, the various uh, states uh, in the Arab states in the region uh, are are structured differently, have different uh, social bases and different uh, political systems, and and those. Uh, the Arab monarchies of the Gulf, the oil-producing states, are all sort of family-based uh, systems uh, that are, are constructed rather differently from the um, uh, so-called republics that resulted from military revolutions going back uh, 50 years in places like Egypt or uh, uh, once upon a time Iraq or, or uh, Syria or Libya. Uh, so w- part of the effect of whatever happens in Egypt will depend upon the starting point in these other uh, countries. But I, I also would like to say that it is likely that if the Egyptian revolution succeeds, um, uh, those regimes that do not want to see fundamental change in their uh, countries might start uh, to rethink about their you know, their polity, the way in which they treat uh, you know people. So they might uh, start introducing some reform mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. in order to to avoid you know, the repetition of what happened in Tunisia and, and in Egypt. So uh, that could be also something positive. Yes. You know. And that includes maybe, you know, the, uh, uh, the regimes uh, uh, run by, you know, royal families. Uh, but one has to uh, see. But the pressure really should come from uh, below. Otherwise, on their own, it is very unlikely to do it because it is not in their interest. But but beyond that, I, I think some uh, I think fundamental really changes are happening within the societies. Uh, you know the sociological changes mm-hmm. that these mm-hmm. societies are be- becoming more and more uh, urban, and they are becoming more and more literate, and you have a younger, uh, you know, educated younger generation, and uh, of course the new technology opens you know new perspective uh, for a lot of these uh, people. And I think one can. Uh, think that these would generate certain actors, uh, these kind of changes would generate certain actors who want to uh, see some significant changes in their society. And here comes really the pressure that uh, might be uh, exerted on the rulers to come up with some kind of, uh, you know, a solution, some kind of reform. And, and uh, the revolutionaries in Egypt and Tunisia could be this, um, could trigger that could could uh, make the incumbent regime to rethink about uh, their uh, authoritarian polity. 